Our next speaker is Jennifer Foster. Jennifer is the Associate Vice President for Adult Education and Workforce Development at the, and State GED Administrator at the Illinois Community College Board. She also serves as the State Director for Adult Education, Family Literacy, and GED Testing. She's got her plate full. Jennifer has been with ICCB for the last 13 years and in adult education for more than 24 years. She oversees approximately 90 state and federally funded adult education and literacy programs, as well as 78 GED testing centers in Illinois. Please welcome Jennifer Foster. It's so good to be here with you this morning uh, to talk about the uh, subject that has changed my life totally, <laughs> GED testing. I can say that it has changed my life because it's a lot of work involved in terms of changing from an old format to, to a new format. So I am very pleased to be here with you this morning uh, to talk about uh, GED uh, from the, the state's perspective and have colleagues here that will be speaking throughout the sessions and David Deggs from GED Testing Services. So we work very closely together to make sure that by the end of the year we're ready to go with uh, GED testing. Uh, as mentioned in your, your program this morning, Crystal Hack um, could not be here. She um, is very ill, so we ask uh, for your, your, your prayers for her. Uh, she went down to um, uh, St. Louis uh, and ran a 5K and suffered a, a, an aneurysm. And so um, we're just going day to day. Um, and so if you would, just keep her in your thoughts and in your prayers, because uh, this has happened in our office uh, before and actually with our, one of our, our staff, and they were actually best friends. So that's one of those things that you're, when you get that call, you're like, what? Is this, this, this can't be happening again. But keep her in your, in your thoughts and prayers. Um, iPathways is very important uh, as we begin this work, as we try to incorporate um, the Common Core and trying to get our students test ready. We really want to make sure that they're moving forward uh, in all areas, in adult education. Uh, I know that David is going to talk about lo a lot of the products that are available through GED testing services. And I'm going to share uh, with you some of the things that will be available to teachers and also uh, to administrators and what we're planning to do as we roll out uh, CBT testing in Illinois. And it's very exciting, so you should be very excited. You can do that. You can be excited. <laughs> okay. What we wanted to do this morning is to just provide you with a brief history of what's going on uh, in terms of where we, have, where we were and now where we are today. It, you probably can't read this little writing because even on the PowerPoint, I tried to read it and it didn't. So we'll have to work on that the next time. So we have evolved from 1942. We've gone from this being a test for the military, for military personnel, and now we're at a point of a new assessment in 2014, one that's a computer-based um, test. So we've evolved over time. I remember when the discussion started as a part of, of um, the Illinois process, and we're like, no, GED testing services, sorry, David, GED testing services will never be able to do that, will never be able to pull it off. Well, they have. And so we are, we are here today. And as you can see, some of the information we've shifted from uh, more of uh, uh, just an, towards an application, just a memorizing type thing and take your test and move on, but now we're more to an application. And what does that mean? And it was very uh, good that GED Testing Services decided to take this series, this 2002 series, and put it in a computer-based format so it allows us the opportunity to kind of test out some of those items. And we're going to talk about some of the pilot sites that were around the state. So we're really happy of where we are and where we have evolved um, to, to become um, a CBT testing site in Illinois. So as we ventured down this road, there were a lot of people that were like me, just imagine me in 50 states. 
There were a lot of people and territories that came together in 2008 and said, no, this is not going to happen. No, this can't happen. But then, you know, one of the things that we tried to do is step, take a step back. We really needed to take a step back and say, you know, what's best for our learners? Uh, what will get them to their destination a lot sooner than where we are um, today? So they started introducing things about college readiness and the Common Core and all of those discussions. Well, Common Core, adult education, we're like, no, no, that's a K-12 issue. But if we're truly trying to get individuals college ready, then we need to look at that. We need to try to look at what the Common Core standards are and do some alignment there. So as we move forward, in 2010, they announced it. We're going to do this. Before that time, we'd go to a conference, we'd come back from a conference, and, well, we're not going to implement it in 2011. We're not going to implement it. I was like, well, will there ever be a test? But now we have a test. And that merger between Pearson View and GED testing services has been huge. That you have one that is really good with the CBT because they've been doing it for years. So, and then you have the knowledge base of GED testing services from the paper-based testing, putting those two entities together to try to come up with a computer-based testing, uh, a computer-based testing format. So we were really uh, pleased that uh, the announcement came that we are going to move towards computer-based testing. So like within any uh, um, institution, you have to take things to your board. One of the huge issues for our board was the cost of the test. You know, it's going to cost a lot. But I think that over time and with our pilot sites and um, with a lot of the information that have, has been given uh, from GED testing services, we were able to kind of take a step back and say, you know, this, this might not be too bad. And I just came back uh, in, from July from Baltimore from a GED testing conference and all of the products that will be available to teachers in order to help them um, to navigate the computer-based testing process and to help their students is just phenomenal. It's just going to be huge. And hopefully you'll see some of those things as the fall uh, conferences come, come um, to be this, this year. So our board approved, approved us moving forward uh, with GED testing services through the end of this year, and then also that we approved the fee, and we did the very minimal fee, which was $120, uh, $120. $30, what we're trying to say is $30 in January is $30 per test. And individuals can take the test one, one um, test at a time, and that's a good thing. But what it means for our adult education uh, programs, it means that we may have to do our instruction a little bit differently in order to accommodate the student. Will, it, will we have everything in place and ready to go uh, January 2nd uh, on the adult ed side? No. GED testing, we will. It will be open to everyone. So that means that over the, the course of these next few months, we are going to be providing more training more uh, instruction to all of the adult education instructors in order to uh, enhance their capabilities of delivering. Will it be a little bit more difficult, the GED test? Of course it will be, because as, we, as the standards for high school increases, the standards for adult education will also increase. And we've gone from this focus of a high school diploma that, that will get your foot in the door of employment. And as you know, that um, statistics have shown that it will require more than a high school diploma in order to access some of the good jobs of the future. So it will require some post-secondary education in order to do that. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to help our students to move past just having a high school diploma. And how many of you have heard of bridge programs? And, I best like models and all of those things. Those are things that we want to move to because one of the things we want to do, we don't want to just teach to a test, whatever the test is. We don't want to teach to a test. We want to get individuals college ready. 
And so some of you that are um, in adult education programs, you know that we've already started that. We've aligned our, our standards, our Illinois content standards, to the Common Core and College Readiness Standards. Not only that, we've also aligned with technology skills. Our Adult Education Advisory Committee have given uh, technology skills for instructors as well as for students. What are those things that you need? We're working on coming up with presentations that will help all of the instructors uh, or all of those that are involved in the preparation of our students. Another area that our Common Core, uh, that our standards are aligned to, Common Core technology skills. Those are very important. The next thing is evidence-based reading instruction. The uh, knowledge and skill statements across the 16 career uh, pathway clusters. All of those pieces are very important to our students. They're very important to our students and making sure that they have those skills. So you say, well, how am I going to, as an instructor, how am I going to do this? How are our instructors going to do this? We will have training to help them to do that. We're going to develop a statewide curriculum that can be adapted by all institutions to, uh, in terms of what your needs are within your own uh, institutions and organizations. So all of those pieces are there. They're there for the student to en enhance what's going on in the program. So as we continue our conversations at r around uh, computer-based testing, we began with four pilot sites, and I'm trying to, to remember, uh, and I know one because I'm standing here. <laughs> College of DuPage uh, is one of our pilot sites. Sauk Valley, because Tony is sitting right in front of me, so I can remember that one. Uh, we also have Eldon as a part of that process, and we also have uh, Frontier Community College, so I did good. So if, once I get to the others, I will, not, I will lose it there. Uh, but we, have, we do have the four pilot sites, and we've had some conversations with them. And they've given us their feedback, because behind the scenes, it's beautiful now, because they've worked all the bugs out, and I am very appreciative to them for doing that. But behind the scenes, there are a lot, there's a lot that happens. Uh, we had to take the application. We had to put it online. We had to have several conversations. Do you mean to say this? Do you need to do this, or do you need to change this after when the process started? So we are appreciative to our four pilot sites for providing us with the information. There are at least uh, 19 sites uh, that are offering uh, GED CBT as a part of, as of today, so that's a good thing. We have about 40 sites that are in the process. Uh, and we're trying to hurry them along. We have phone calls with them. We call and say, hurry it along, because we want to make sure that there is access throughout the state for all of our, our, our centers. Uh, we have 25 additional sites. Uh, and that says not including IDOC. I'll talk about that in a sec second, that are committing. They're having the conversations. Um, and, and again, we're on the phone trying to hurry those conversations. We, we know that we like to talk, and um, actually, I'm really a quiet person. So when I sat down next to Angelica, I'm just like, OK, the nerves are, are kicking in. They're kicking in. Um, but the 25 additional sites that we're having, we want to make sure that there is coverage throughout the state. Currently, we have about 78 sites uh, that are delivering uh, paper-based testing. And so what we want to do is make sure we have at least that number of CBT sites. And if we fall short, I'm sure my friend, my new friend, David Deggs, will give me a list of Pearson View sites throughout the state <laughs> that I can uh, flip the switch on and say they will now deliver that. So we want to make sure that we are giving all of our, our paper-based sites currently, giving them the opportunity to come on board. So the 2002 closeout series, well, we're doing a lot of things there. Um, all of the scores will not transfer. Uh, so if an individual does not pass the test by the end of the year, they will not transfer to, through the next year. And we're all familiar with that moving uh, to the 2002 series. That was the same philosophy there. We have two things that are going on as we move forward. We're instituting computer-based testing. And we're also changing the series. 
Uh, this, this test will be aligned with Common Core. And as the rigor increases um, for, uh, in, in high school, then you will see some increase in the rigor of the, um, the new test. So we're ha we have those two things going. We have to make sure we have the technology skills. We have to make sure that our students have technology skills. We have to make sure that our curriculum is aligned because we're actually moving to a whole new series of the test. So it's a juggle. And so for testing centers that are trying to make that decision to move forward, it's best to do it now so that you can at least work out some of the bugs beforehand and understand some of the things. And the bugs have been worked out by these fabulous four. I, I've renamed you all fabulous four. They have, they have worked out all of the bugs. And so now it's, um, it's your individual institutions. There may be some things that you uh, have to work out at your own individual institutions. So um, in the 2002 series, uh, it is currently available uh, on computer. And I have another best friend that I talked to for about 45 minutes on the way up. So he kept me awake. For, that was great, even though I was yawning. Um, but we really, um, as a part of the, the process, Jeff uh, Doherty has worked very closely with our office and also with Pearson View to make sure that if an individual takes the test on paper and wants to switch to, uh, to a computer and finish up there, we figured out a way to merge those results so that individuals uh, will, will have that opportunity and they, they don't have to start on computer and finish on computer or start on paper and finish on paper. So they can move back and forth between, between the two. Um, they're currently for paper base, you can uh, take the test three times, uh, but on the computer you can take it six times. So an individual has up to nine times in which they can complete this test by the end of the year. So that's a good thing uh, in terms of that, and thank you Jeff for working so closely with us to do that. For computer-based testing currently, there are still five tests, and the, the computer-based version is it's $23 per test. Now moving in January, there will be four tests, and so the, the cost will be a little bit uh, higher. The Spanish version is also available on computer currently and in the future, we just found out. So, so when we talk about the closeout for testing, we have some plans uh, in terms of when we want to cut off some of the first-time test takers. Uh, November 16th is the cutoff for paper-based testing, uh, for uh, all paper-based testing. That's for first-time test takers only. Now, if you want to, uh, the retakes, you can still do that. But for first-time test takers, and I know that, you know, I've gone back and forth with a lot of different um, institutions, but we just can't, we're going to stick to that because um, I understand from your perspective what happens in your own institutions, but I get the call from the, the legislature and the legislators, and they ask, you know, we want to do this, and I get calls from angry parents, and I get calls from angry institutions that say, I want my individual to be able to take the paper-based testing. So we set that, that mark as November the 16th, and then um, first-time tech Taste, oh, excuse me, test takers will be allowed to take the test through uh, December 21st, uh, first time test taker on computers only. So they can, if they want to take the test, um, they can go and take it on computers. So we're going to allow that through that time. But if, please be um, diligent in talking with your, your students or with individuals that you come in contact with because it's going to be very important. If they don't pass it by that time, they will have no other opportunity. But we wanted to at least give them that experience. If they wanted to come and take one test, then they can do that. But um, I know that the testing um, fee is a little bit steep for some of the individuals, so make sure that they're making wise decisions in terms of taking the test. And if they feel that they've prepared and they can go on December 21st and pass the test, Great, that's, that's wonderful. The uh, December 21st, however, is the cutoff for all testers within the state. 
we have to be able to process the information and in the um, and upload to the IDB. Jeff uh, actually is uh, does all of our uploading to GED testing services. There will be no exceptions. So tell all your friends, all your pals, don't call. There are no exceptions to those rules. We will be uh, also sending those materials back um, to uh, GED testing services at the end of the year like we normally do. Uh, they have to be trackable and trace and make sure that they actually get back to GED testing services. So as the bank of testing um, increases, the test items increase, you know, individuals can take the test as, um, as many times, and I think it's six times in 2014, that individuals will be able to take the test on computer. So up to six times, and as that, and then I think there's some sort of a wait period, and then they can go back in and take the, the test again. So it's not like it was. There's a lot of flexibility. And, after the meeting in July, I came out kind of refreshed because there are a lot of things that are happening on the ground level in terms of development. So uh, just in summary, will be released, the CBT test will be released January 2nd, available on computer only, must be taken at an approved Pearson View testing center with uh, approval um, by the ICCB. We still will handle that. Our relationship um, in terms of, of, I've had lots of calls, can you come out and look at our testing center and make sure that it's, it's what it needs to be in order to, I have no training in that. I would just be coming out just as exercise and I need a little bit, but um, I would just be coming out just looking and, and I don't have any types of specs as I did before in looking at uh, a room. So. That is all handled through Pearson View. Yes, will our role diminish some? Yes, it will at the state level. Your contracts will be between Pearson View and um, your institution. Uh, I won't sign off on your contracts any longer, but we will be there to answer any questions. So everybody knows my Leanne, so Leanne is going to be okay. Uh, I have other work that she can do. As you can tell, I had a, a title added to, to um, had a, um, a little department added to my title. So I will be able to make sure that she has a lot to do so we won't lose her. Um, but there is, um, there's lots of things that we will have control over that um, we won't have control over as we did in the past. And one of those areas is, is testing accommodations and I'll go through that in a moment. So, um, Available on computer only, so no paper-based. Um, the Department of Corrections and another one of our sites that I can't remember right now applied for a waiver earlier in the year, the Lincoln's Challenge program, uh, applied for a waiver at the beginning of the year and uh, to give them, allow them some time to get on computer-based testing and you understand the complexities as it relates to the Department of Corrections. It's not just an Illinois problem. Uh, it is across all of the states. So they're, they're working through that process. Our IDOC is very hopeful that they will be up and running uh, by uh, January 2nd. So their first, one of their first um, uh, institutions will uh, have their computers installed very quickly. So we're really we really feel good about that, but we wanted to institute the waiver. But for everyone else, it's only on computers, only on computers, no more paper-based testing. And I'm not going to get into a lot of the content because I know David will, will go there. Um, there, are, there will be four tests. And what I've heard, uh, I know I've had some conversations with, with Jared that I've heard that sometimes individuals get finished a lot quicker than they have on the paper-based testing. He also told me that, you know, he, um, with some of the paper-based testing uh, process, that individuals are not, they're wanting to do computer-based testing. So he's diminished the amount of time uh, in terms of paper-based testing. So, you know, that the interest is there. I get lots of calls from individuals wanting to take it on computers. So that's a, that, that's a good thing. Scores, um, 
obtained on previous versions cannot be combined. Just, just to reiterate uh, the scoring mechanisms, I'll leave that to David to explain, but uh, just briefly, minimum passing score, 150 points in each of the content area. There are four content areas. 600 uh, score minimum is what we're, we're also being told at this point. I know it, the test is being normed at this point, so we'll have to wait and see what the, the, the end result, but for right now, though, that's information that we have. Uh, there will be a high score in one content module will not make up for a low score in another content area, so you have to make sure that that 150 is there. There will be two scoring levels. We'll pr probably find out, if not this fall, later on in terms of what those scoring levels will be. Because again, we're trying to test and make sure that it is individuals are college ready. Because that's one of the things that we want to test. They passed the high school equivalency, now they're moving on to college ready. All registrations are done through Pearson View on their site. Um, if there is something that happens in the queue, we have the 16 and 17 year old issue in our state. Uh, if an individual put, puts in their birth date and it will stop their registration process until we receive documentation, that documentation will come to our office and then what we do is go in and we release it once we get that documentation. So um, that information, we've um, worked with all of your ROEs in order to make sure, because if we had all of the different ROEs going into the system, it was going to be a nightmare. So we have fixed it so that it comes to our office and we look at that and then we do notify the ROE if there is a 16 or 17 year old and we work very closely with them on that in terms of approval. Those testing fees are paid to Pearson View, whether they're paid um, uh, if you have vouchers that you want to purchase for individuals, maybe they don't have a credit card or a debit card or, or any other um, card. Um, they can, there are vouchers that are available that you can actually purchase uh, and uh, the students can also purchase those for you. They enter that information, there is a little code there they enter that code and then they're able to pay for the, the test. Uh, this does not include issuance of the, the $120 fee does not include the issuance of the um, Illinois High School Equivalency Certificate. Does not include that. They will have to submit to the Regional Office of Education or Cook County. Um, uh, some of you are here from, from other places. They have to go through their ROE, give the $10 and $3 for official transcript, and that is paid directly to those entities and not to Pearson View. Okay. But there is some sort of document that says the transcript. Yes, there is an unofficial transcript that the individual will receive. And remember, we have the Constitution requirement in Illinois. Great. We have constitution requirement, we have a 16 and 17 year old, 18 year old requirement uh, there, or 16 and 17 year old requirement. So we have the constitution requirement. We are working to get the, com the uh, constitution uh, as also a computer based test. Um, Jeff is working on that as we speak, or not as we not speak, as but <laughs> eventually. So the whole idea is to hopefully have it on ready uh, in January and We'll do some testing of it to make sure that it's okay, but that will also be computer-based. But we're also going to keep the, the, the paper-based for a while until uh, we kind of get through that process. But it, there is a computer-based format that is coming to a location close to you. Um, we talked about the withdrawal letter, letter that has to come uh, to the ICCB from the last school that the individual attended. It's, there is a hold in the queue. We work with the ROE in order to approve that and inform them, and then we release it in the queue. So that will be our responsibility is to make sure. We've had several of those, and one of the things that we want to make sure is that you know, we're working with our ROE office um, because they are the, 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 the truant officers as well. So we want to make sure that individuals are not just taking the test for the sake of taking the test and leaving high school. So we want to make sure that that is, that is definitely there. Yes, ma'am. What about uh, homeschoolers or people that have gone to religious school? So is that something that is still allowed? 
they still will have to provide that information from that last, that withdrawal of that last school that they attended. So whatever the, that issue is, they have to, they have to make sure that that's, that's there. Okay. Yes. Do you have the other under age 18 procedure worked out? So if an under age person begins to apply for the test online, their registration will get cut off. Yes. Say, that's okay, now you have to and then they start something else, which is pro proved to ICCB. Yes. Proved to ICCB. Yes. Can a person who's underage short circuit that by sending you proof ahead of time? No, once it goes into the system, then it, it, it's, and it doesn't take that long to, uh, I can do it, Leanne can do it, so if she's out of the office, then I can go into the system and, and look at their documentation, and, and I get those calls, so it's usually within, uh, I would say, it w it's usually within like a 48-hour period that she has that turned around really quickly, and it's not even that long. I'm just, just erring on the side of caution. Yeah. And so sometimes after that cuts off, what happens is that they will immediately call Leanne, immediately, and she'll tell them exactly what to do. And sometimes it can be turned around within, you know, within a few minutes if they can get that information. And, and uh, it just depends on how long it takes them to get that information. But once we receive it, it's pretty quick. It's just to go in and let them open it up, and then they can go back in and finish the process. Yes. I, um, and I'm trying to remember real quickly here. This, with Spanish, it's where they would have gone to school here oh. in, in Illinois. That, that's the policy. Where they would have gone to school. When they came here, where would they have gone? And they get that information from that school, and then that's how they send that so in. The student is, is not enrolled in the process or, yeah. We have to have that documentation because if you're in a, an adult education program, our funds cannot conflict with the compulsory school age attendance rule. This was something that newly came to us. We just said document that you tried to get that information, but in adult education, we cannot serve that student in adult education unless we have that official documentation. Somebody had a question here, right here and then there. Joe, oh, yeah. I can uh, see that far. That's yeah. good. I, just maybe a quick clarification there, where they would have went or where they live today, if you're uh, a student? Today, okay. today, when they do the application. Okay. Yes, ma'am. They still have to do the same thing. I know. Yeah, but we still have to have the same documentation. Yes, ma'am. We do have students who are currently enrolled in our program, courtesy of DACA, and I think that they have never gone to high school, and they're just trying to register an on-taking GED. So one of the problems that people have is that we tell them to go see that's documentation put that documentation send it to us and we work with the ROE and they will the ROE knows the law backwards and forwards we may not know their law in terms of what they have to do in terms of compulsory school age attendance we will work with them on that on that issue So, that's a good lead-in. Certificates and transcripts will be issued by the Regional Office of Education or GED Testing Services. These st they are still the official um, office of record for GED testing. That is a part of statute and we will continue with that. There are some statutory things that we're going to look at uh, for this fall and in introducing in the veto session uh, relative to um, 
what's going on with, with the whole process now, things that we've learned uh, through going through this process. We have to go in and, and make some changes there. So you'll hear um, probably in the next couple months, you'll hear a little bit more about that process. Um, ROEs will do, um, will look at the Illinois scoring database. It will look all the same. So we've worked out an agreement with Pearson View and uh, Jeff's place. Jeff is the scoring site currently for all of the, the process. This information, I un understand it not, so whatever I'm saying, I will defer. Um, but they are going to upload the information to our, our, our IDB database. And so therefore, when the ROEs go in to look at things, it will look the exact same way as it has always looked for them, the way it looks now for paper-based testing. So they know, and then they just, they get this information, and it's actually signed, and, that's, and, and it's issued once the individual submits their, their $10 fee. Yes. What's the turnaround time for that upload from the point they take the test to the point that it's in that database and available for the ROE? Stephanie, I said I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Do you know what the turnaround it's, time is? Uh, Over it depends nine? on the test, but it's, it could be anywhere from one to six days I've seen. One to six window. days? Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, typically two to three days is the average for everything but writing. Okay. Writing tends to be about four mm -hmm. or five days. Okay. All right. On okay. average. Just and that's one of the things because we have that 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 writing test as a part of that that still has to be sent away uh, and scored so uh, there's a new way that I'm not going to get into his part of the presentation so yeah But in order, um, and, and thank you for that, in order for them to issue the, the um, transcript and also the certificate, it has to come from the database. We have to have the official. So just if they go in and they get their unofficial report and they take it to the ROE and say, see, it's in here, we have to wait until that's actually official for us. So we've talked about this information. We have to have proof of passing the Constitution. So when the individual goes to the ROE or goes to the um, GED testing um, office in Cook County or sends their information in, we still have to make sure that they've passed the Constitution's tests. So if they passed it at a local adult education program or with ROE, they have to present proof of that. Uh, the ROE would have that proof. The adult education program may send that information over. Um, or if they took it in high school, their junior year, they made it through the junior year and they have that, they still have to provide that proof in order to be issued the Illinois high school equivalency. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, it said under 18 and you have to get them drop out. Is, is the dropout age still 17? So yes. Okay. Okay, say that one more time. Sorry. With the new the way the new test is, we're still going with you have to be 17 to test. There's not going to be rising. No, other right. It's still no, it's still 17. That's We want to stay in alignment with um, um, the compulsory school age attendance rule. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, so the, the tester would need to, if they had, say, um, their um, transcript that showed they had passed the GED, they need to bring that or somehow get that to the ROE? No. no. That um, the relationship has already been established in terms of with paper-based testing, for example. The ROEs um, know how to go into the database, get that information off, and, and print it off. So no, the no. individuals don't have to show any proof okay. of and anything. If they've taken the Constitution test along with their GED, then that information will just be provided to Right, and if, they've, uh, if they took it at the specific ROE where they're going back to get it, they will have record of that. Okay. If they took it at adult education program, then they will have to make sure they bring that proof. And also, if they took it in high school, they will have to make sure that they have that documentation as well to take with them to the ROE to, for issuance of the official transcript and the Illinois um, high school equivalency okay. certificate. So, so they do need to bring Yes, they have to prove the Constitution test. Okay. They can't just get it without proof. If the 
I always says, I don't have proof here that you, there's a box in our database. If they don't have the proof there, then they cannot issue that, that certificate. Okay. Right. Okay. If that box is not checked, they cannot issue so that they, certificate. So if they've done it in high school, the box will be checked. If they've done it independently since, they will need to bring something to show the ROE. Correct. Yes, ma'am. So currently, um, right now, the student would bring proof of constitution to us as a testing site, not to our ROE. So are you saying that's going to change in 2014 and they will take them to the ROE, or will they continue to bring them to us as a No. They have to go, the ROE is the keeper of the record. They will be the ones that will issue that information. Yes. Yes, because your relationship now is going to change. You're going to become a Pearson View testing center instead of an Illinois testing center on paper base. So some of those same those functions that were done before are no longer going to be because you're a Pearson View testing center. Um, let me give an example. You're a Pearson View testing center and I know you. I, I, I know who you are. But there are going to be other Pearson View centers that as we look at capacity issues and making sure that the state is covered that we may bring on board. I don't have a relationship with those, those individuals. I may never ever see them. But I know you, okay. I, I know who you are. But I may not have any relationship with those with those other individuals. So, yes, um, you will, will the as a Pearson View testing center. Um, I'm not quite certain, but I don't. I think the ROE will have that access, and so um, not and not right. Yeah. But we, that's something that we will have to discuss. You're bringing up some good, very good issues that we, we have to discuss as, you know, we're, what, six months, and these are good things to, that come up. It's a tru truant alternative truant program. Those will still be approved right. If you look on our website and look at the statute, there are certain programs that um, will qualify in terms of 16, but they have to pre present that information that uh, they are eligible. And I know that Job Corps has been wanting to be one, but that's not one that the statute approves. So Lincoln's Challenge and some of the, um, I think it's 16A and 16B of the statute, uh, those things are listed or those entities are listed there. Time check. I have a question. Yes. Jared, how are you letting um, <laughs> well, this, I He's gonna know. have a session here in oh, just a moment. Just, but go ahead. I <laughs> wanted to know how is the ROE being informed about your computer based testing people so they know how to who they're issuing certificates. Okay. I can answer that question. Uh, I meet regularly with the ROEs. And so the ROEs will still have the same process as they do now. So they know that the individual now will have to contact them in order for in, uh, issuance of that Illinois high school equivalency because of the fact that they still have to pay the $10 and they still have to pay the $3 for the official transcript. So they will have to uh, issue that, uh, that diploma. So they will have to be contacted by the ROE. I mean, the student will have to contact the ROE and say, I want to get this, and they need the resources in order to, you know, they have to print off that certificate at that point. But they will still get the bells and whistles and the dings and the whatever Jeff decides to put in the system to let them know that there are individuals that have passed that, that test. Now, they won't issue that certificate until that fee is actually paid. I, I think I have five minutes. Okay. All right. I don't know what's next, but this is the flow chart that Leanne told me I had to go through. <laughs> so as a part of the flow chart here, um, the tester registers and pays the testing fees online through a voucher system, credit card, debit card, all of those pieces. Uh, the test may be taken at any Illinois CBT site or Pearson View site. You have to be established as a Pearson View site. The tester receives uh, an unofficial score report. At that time, they're happy. They're like, wow, I get all of my stuff right now. This is great. So some of you that can see here, 
This information uh, scoring is uploaded to uh, GED testing services and the Illinois scoring database. Then they go over here, they're happy, they have their scores, they pass, they go here, they want to pick up their transcripts at the ROE or Cook County. Then, um, I think I went wrong, sorry, here, see, I don't tell her. Um, <laughs> testers must uh, contact the ROE, that answers your question, I think, must contact the ROE and take the Constitution test and provide proof that they've already passed, pay the fees, <laughs> then they go here, ROEs access the database. I think this was your question, Pam. The ROEs access the database base, and they verify the GED certificate, and then voila, they get that information uh, in person at the ROE or via email with, uh, with some. It depends on, sometimes students will move to other locations and will want that information to come back. Or Cook County, it is a mail-in process, and if you, if you reside in Cook County, we have another process and we're working through some of those issues now. Okay. So on step two about taking it anywhere in the state of Illinois, which is a whole new bag for us, right? Um, so there's not a problem then of the ROE not knowing because it's a central database and if that student presents himself, they then right. know that they go in there and do that. The, the way we have it set up is that we couldn't accommodate all of the different rules that we have in our, in our statute. So they can take the test, but the, when, we, when it comes to issuing that, the, that um, certificate, it has to be in the place of residence. So that's where the ROEs come back into the process to make sure that they are the overseer of the records. I've had conversations with uh, all of the ROEs. I have a meeting coming up on the 22nd in order to uh, kind of reiterate some of those those things that we, we agreed upon. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. And we're also next week going to start sending emails to the county of residence office whenever a test is taken at any CPP location. Right. So you're going to get an email that says so and so just tested at this location. And that's what I was telling you about the bells and whistles that he's going to put in there. I leave that up to him. He's my best friend. Okay. Yes. The Constitution test, did you say that if they take it in a high school that the ROE already will know that? No. no. If they take it at an ROE office, then the ROE will, may already know that information. If they take it in high school, their junior year, then they need to get that verification from the high school. And the question came up, this, when they receive that verification, does it have to remain in a sealed envelope when they take it to ROE or can they open it before they take it? Because one of my students... Okay, well, I'll write that down. That oh, wasn't okay. on part of the flow chart. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We bothered going over there, and we all decided, well, maybe it's best to just leave it sealed because if you open it, maybe they won't accept it. So they kind of took it on blind faith that what was in the envelope was there. But okay, I've written myself a note right here, and that then that was my question. And what I usually tell my students to do is to request two, open one, and keep one sealed. Okay. Because I don't know either. Okay. So when they get their unofficial score report, it sounds like they're going to get everything but their writing score? Because they Currently. Currently. Okay. Currently. But come January, will they also get their writing they'll, score? They'll, okay. There are four tests. I'm going to leave that to him okay. to talk about. <laughs> there are four tests. It's not a part of my flow chart. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make a comment. I had a student that just went through this process. Mm -hmm. The was very small. Okay. Okay. That's good. Yeah, he did. He went to Rome. He got his everything. Very cool. Good. Very good. And I knew where Rome was. <laughs> no white boxes, and we're we're going to discuss that at our regional meetings that are coming up. Um, there will be no white boxes. So. I'll t I, I have a story I'll tell you the first week of October about me and the white boxes. So, um, Just a little bit of more information about testing accommodations. I spoke briefly earlier about this. Um, currently, testing accommodations um, for paper-based testing come to our office. Uh, these will be sent directly to GED testing services. There's a, a place on there if they're requesting some information regarding 
uh, they want accommodations, then they will receive a message. Uh, and that information will be uh, communicated to them. They will know where to download the forms, pull those off, where they need to send the accommodations. Our office will not be, no longer be responsible for accommodations. We will not look at them or anything. We will no longer be responsible. And if I have to say, that's one of the areas that I can do a, a dance. <laughs> That has, that has been one of the most difficult things is trying to make some decisions when I am not, that's not, you know, I've been trained by GED testing services to look at certain things, but you're, you're talking about their lives and, and, and giving them accommodations. And the accommodations, for the most part, have been built into the, into the computer-based testing format, but there are some other things that I know that you'll have questions about, so I'll defer to David on those. Um, GED testing services will uh, email the candidate once the decision has been made within 30 days. Um, then the, uh, the candidate um, is instructed to call GED testing if they have any questions. And then they, if they have accommodations, then they can just proceed with scheduling of the, of the tests. So accommodation process, it's an online registration form. You indicate it. Uh, you're instructed where to download the forms. You will receive, uh, you will fax the information, decisions made within, within 30 days. And I talked with John Husterman, and he assures me that all of that is going to happen. So good, I don't want it to come back. So just when it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> so we, no turning back. Um, and then this is a number, if a candidate changes their mind or has selected incorrectly, so they go in, they hit the button, and then it freezes then what they need to do is just call the number and then what, that, what will happen, it will, it will be released. Okay? And then they can go through the registration process. So if they click it and they didn't want accommodations, then they can go and call that number and it will be okay. Will private rooms still be an option? As I, accommodations? I think there are other accommodations that will be built into the process and that uh, takes place between the Pearson View Testing Center and that I don't have any information in, in regards to that, but I will make a note of that. They can, they can provide a private room. Um, if your Jarrett may be the better authority on this. If your center does not have a private room, then they, they may work with you to schedule that at a time that your center is not open to other test takers, maybe on a Friday afternoon or something. So it will so be still an option. It still be still being one on one testing if that's something that the student Or might have to go to another center. Well, it's, not it's, okay. it's possible. We'll bring that up. Okay. From the 11 to 12, we'll talk about that. <laughs> okay, great. Um, and here's some examples of an event-based emails. Thank you for, for your interest in GED testing. You indicated that you want uh, documented disabilities or disorder. That's what they will receive, the message that they will receive. Then uh, example of a decision, accommodation approved. Uh, oh, she has my name up there, great. Um, <laughs> extended time, 30 minutes testing, so that gives you some information on what they're going to see. Also, um, testing accommodations, any reads, uh, a reader or a scribe, that will be designated by Pearson View. So, I, you know, when you call me, I'm, I'm going to say you will need to contact Pearson View. It just kind of tells you how the state is going to, we're, we're part of the process, but certain parts of our functions are going to be removed. Uh, candidates can register for as many or as few test modules as they would like to take at one time. Okay. And the accommodations, if it's 25% of the time or uh, extended time, that will be built right into the system. Let's see, and this gives you information. There is a calculator, but I'll let David talk about the calculator. It's TI, and I forgot the rest of it. So, um, the, um, the audio cassette cannot be used with the CBT. So, you will, you know, all of those accommodations, as many as possible, from what we understand, as many as possible have been built into the CBT process. And that's more information, more information, more information, policies, numbers you can call while I'm finished.
unfinished questions. Okay. I was sort of worried that I'm like, I don't have enough information to last an hour, but I guess I was. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you accommodating me and, and listening to me uh, speak about GED. Uh, there are some things that we're really, we're really happy about, um, and we're wanting to make sure that we're able to assist you in whatever way possible. And please uh, make sure that if you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call. Thank you.